Hello, Tommy Wish again, and uh, we want to further our lesson on uh, triangles with a couple truisms. And by truism, I mean they're, they're facts about triangles that uh, I know you're going to be quizzed on it uh, oh, probably many times uh, in uh, your career. And uh, if we look at the first one, we're talking about the relationship between the size of the sides and the size of the angles. And I hope from these first uh, triangles that I've drawn up there you can see that as the angle, in this case A or uh, D, G, and J, the angle opens up and you'll notice what happens to the length of the side opposite that angle. Obviously if the angle is wider then the side becomes wider and that leads to the rule that basically says the side opposite the smallest angle will also be the smallest side. And conversely, the side opposite the largest angle will be the largest size. And I hope that becomes obvious as, as you look at these. As this angle increases, then you notice the side also increases. And it makes logic because it, as it opens, it uh, is a wider gap and therefore uh, the side becomes longer. And uh, obviously the opposite is true then in that the larger the size the side is, the larger that angle will be. For instance, in this case, we see the smallest side is 1, therefore the smallest angle will be A. If we look and we say, oh, the smallest or the largest size is three, then the largest angle would be B. Uh, let's jump down to this one. We look five, six, and seven. We say, oh, seven is the largest side, so therefore H would be the largest angle. Uh, five is the smallest side, so therefore I would be the smallest angle. And usually what, how you'll see these on a test is they'll, they'll give you the sides and then they'll say uh, put the angles inside in order by smallest to largest. So if we did that, the smallest angle here would be angle A. The next smallest would be angle C. And then the last or the biggest would be angle B. Okay? Let's jump down to this one and see. Our sides are 4, 5, and 8. We can say, well, we're, well, we're going to come back to that one. That's a special one, and I want to come back and uh, uh, show you because there's an error there, and uh, we'll see by going to the next uh, part of the lesson why that error is there. Uh, the other truism that uh, you need to remember with triangles is that the sum of any two sides of a triangle must be greater than the third side. And I call this the uh, shortest distance between two lines is a straight, or two points is a straight line. For instance, if we're going from point A to point B, this red line represents the shortest distance. If that's one side of a triangle, then you'll see that in the triangle ACB that AC and CB added together must be greater than AB. And in the triangle down here that says also that AD plus DB must be longer than AB. AB is the shortest distance between those two points. I've heard it explained if you were going from your home to school, if a is your home and B is school, you go to pick up a friend of yours at his house and then go, you're obviously going to go a longer distance, aren't you? Okay, I hope that's obvious to everybody. Why is that important? Well, again, what you have to do or have to recognize is the sum of any two sides must be greater than the third side. For instance, let's look at these sides of this triangle. 3, 5, and 7. If I added 3 plus 5, that's 8. That is longer than 7, so that's valid. 5 plus 7 is 12. It's longer than 3, so that's still valid. 
3 plus 10, or 7 is 10, 10 is greater than uh, 5, so that, that balances out. How about this next set? 3 plus 8, or 5 is 8, and it's not larger. So I hope you can see that. Wait a minute, that can't be a triangle because if you have a, a line of 8 and you start at this point, let's say it's point A again, if you start there and mark off 3, then you mark off 5, you're just coming to the end and it's not uh, going to be a triangle, is it? It's just going to lay right on top. It has to be greater than 8. So if this were 5.1, would that work? That would be a very skinny triangle, but yes, it would, because it's 8.1 is greater than 8. Uh, let's look at 6 and 8. That's 14, isn't it? It's not greater than 15. So this cannot be a valid triangle. 12, 15, 25. 12 and 15, that's 27. That's greater than 25. That works. 15 and 25 is 40, that's greater than 12, that works. And finally, 12 and 25 is 37, that's greater than 50. So this one is okay. Let's go back up to this one. 4 plus 5 is 9, 9 is greater than 8, so that works. 5 plus 8 is 13, that's greater than 4, and finally, 8 and 4 is 12, that's greater than 5, uh, so that is a valid triangle. Now, let's put it in sequence. Let's put the size of the angles in sequence. The smallest angle is going to be what? Opposite the smallest side. Smallest side is 4, so the smallest angle would be L. The next smallest is 5. The angle opposite that is K, so the next biggest angle would be angle K. And then finally, the largest angle, or side is 8, so therefore, the largest angle would be angle J. Okay? Not difficult, but uh, I've seen it trip up a lot of students. And uh, I think it's a fairly uh, simple concept in both of them, if you just think through those. Okay, the next lesson we're going to be getting into right triangles, and right triangles are kind of uh, unique, and uh, have some special characteristics, and uh, also that'll lead us in some trigonometry, uh, which uh, used to be a course in and of itself, but now it's kind of combined in uh, geometry, and uh, I think you'll find it uh, fun in that uh, we can find out so many more things by applying trigonometry. Thank you.